Hi there, and welcome to our first lesson in our final chemistry topic, C6, Chemistry Out There. Um, today we're going to be looking at something that we have looked at before with electrolysis, and we're going to be looking at how anions and cations are able to move and how, or some of the reactions that we can actually get when we carry out electrolysis. Anyway, I'll see you at the end. Bye-bye. Okay, so let's have a look at our objectives for today's lesson. So for electrolysis, by the end of this lesson, you should know and understand the electrolysis of copper sulfate and of sulfuric acid and how to calculate the amount of product made by electrolysis. Electrolysis is something that we have looked at before. Now what we're going to look at is just the general terms that we use when we're talking about photosynthesis. Now basically photosynthesis uses electricity to split up a compound. Now it needs a couple of uh, conditions to be able to, to actually happen. The first one is it needs to be either a solution or it needs to be molten which means a liquid. Now as soon as you make a solution or a liquid what you are able to do is you're able to form ions. Now ions are charged particles. Now these ions are able to move freely within our solution here. Now this solution has a name as well and this is known as the electrolyte. Now when you turn the power supply on you have a positive electrode which will be this one and a negative electrode which is this one. Now the positive electrode is known as the anode and the negative electrode is the cathode. Now within the solution you have two types of iron. Firstly you have a positive iron which is known as a cation. Secondly you have a negative iron which is known as an anion. Now when you turn the electricity on what happens is the positive ions will move towards the negative electrode. Now this means that the cations move to the cathode. So our positive ions move to our positive electrode and that means our anions which are our negative ions will move towards the negative sorry positive electrode Now when they get to their various electrodes they lose their charge and the negative ions which are the anions here will lose their electrons and the electrons are able to pass through the circuit and go to this side where they gain the electrons. Now the electrolysis of copper sulfate uses this exact same uh, set setup to extract copper. Now the electrolyte in this is the is the copper sulfate and that's a blue color. Now the negative electrode, the cathode, is made from carbon. Now what happens is the blue color of the copper sulfate eventually starts to fade and that's because the copper is actually being removed therefore taking away that blue copper sulfate color. Now there are two reactions that are actually happening while the electrolysis is being carried out and these are what we call half equations. Now the first half equation happens at the cathode and this is where we get the formation of copper. Now here we get the copper ions, the Cu2 plus here, they gain two electrons from the cathode and that becomes copper solid. So we will eventually get a copper 
solid forming around the outside of the carbon electrode. Now at the anode we get a different reaction happening and this is a separate half equation where the hydroxide ions which are in the copper sulfate solution actually lose the four electrons so four hydroxide ions lose four electrons and those electrons are able to go back around the circuit over to the cathode now when they lose their electrons we get oxygen forming and we also get water now the water is obviously colorless and that remains in solution whereas the oxygen which is a gas will start to bubble off and disappear from the solution the electrolysis of sulfuric acid produces the same products um, as sodium hydroxide would when that undergoes electrolysis now sulfuric acid electrolysis is done in a set of apparatus known as the Hoffman apparatus which you can see in this diagram now what you have here is at the bottom a platinum electrode uh, at the bottom here and then you have predominantly water with sulfuric acid in now in here you have a bulb now you normally fill it up to about here because when gases are produced which you can collect in here it takes up more volume than the solution so this bulb actually takes up the extra volume that is made when the gases are produced in here and in here now the two gases that are formed are hydrogen and oxygen now we can see the reactions that happen first of all at the cathode the hydrogen ions the H plus which are in the solution will collect two electrons at the cathode and they will form hydrogen gas so what will happen is this gas will bubble up to the top and it won't be able to escape because the uh, handle there is turned at the anode the hydroxide ions that are also in there will lose the four electrons and it will form oxygen and you will form more water so the oxygen will then move up and travel up to the the top now if for some reason you're not sure which is the anode and which is the cathode uh, once you've carried out the experiment and you've left it running you will find that one of them will be twice the volume of gas as the other one and that's the one with twice the gas is the hydrogen and the one with the half the gas is the oxygen and that's purely because of the water is H2O so for every one oxygen you've got two hydrogen so that's why you get double the amount of hydrogen than you do for the oxygen so if you're still unsure you can actually test to see what products you actually make the first one or first test you can do is if you've got hydrogen you can test it by adding a lit splint to a test tube and you get a squeaky pop and it's often referred to as the squeaky pop test now for oxygen if you have a container of oxygen if you add a glowing splint the oxygen will relight that glowing splint so you get to it burning again now the amount of product that you produce relies on two things the first is the size of the current the second is the amount of time now both of these are proportional so if you wanted to produce five times the amount you could either increase your current by five times the current or you could increase the amount of time that you wanted to do the experiment for by five times ionic solids are fixed in position they are held, held tightly by the donating and receiving of electrons in the ionic bond however when they are heated and they become a molten liquid the ions are then free to move so here we've got sodium chloride with the 
chloride being the green and the sodium being the silver. They're fixed until they are heated. When they're heated, these ions are able to move freely around. Now, when they're free to move around, it means they're able to pass on their charge to an electrode. Now, this method of electrolysis can be used to extract certain metals. Here is a table to show some of the reactions that can happen and some of the products that are made. So here you've got aluminium oxide that makes aluminium and oxygen and you have aluminium 3 plus receives three electrons to make aluminium solid. And here you've got the oxygen uh, which is a 2 minus, it's two lots of it and then we make the O2 which is a gas. Now you will notice with all of these that all the the uh, anions that are made at the anode are gases when they are finished. So this is normally in order to extract the metals such as aluminium, lead and sodium as it is here. Now I'll just move that so it's a bit clearer to see and then you can monitor or sort of look at some of those reactions. Okay, so that concludes our first lesson in C6 Chemistry Out There topic and today we have looked at electrolysis focusing on copper sulfate and sulfuric acid. Now we need to remember that the positive cations uh, go to the negative cathode in the electrolysis and the negative anions go to the positive anode during the electrolysis. Um, we need to remember those equations and make sure that they are balanced. We also need to be aware of whether they're redox reactions as well, which didn't come up in the video, but it does come up in a later topic. Um, so we just need to remember oil rig, oxidation is loss of electrons and reduction is gain of electrons. And we've also looked at some of the reactions involving molten uh, solids as well for the extraction of aluminium, lead and sodium. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this and I'll see you next time. Bye bye, take care.